you've noticed that my lighting is not the same, it's because two of my light bulbs went out and so they're different than the other one in here and I don't understand why, so we have to replace them. So anyways, today I want to talk about something that is definitely a touchy subject, especially in this community of keto and carnivore. I have been experimenting with carb cycling. So carb cycling is choosing days where you go low carb and then days where you go higher carb and usually on days that you lift heavy. Now the benefit, the potential benefit and something that I did experience and my goal with this was to offset the cortisol response after a very heavy lift. When I say a heavy lift, I mean to failure, like I'm trembling afterwards. <laughs> So really heavy, which I think is the only reason this would be appropriate. So after a heavy lift, if you're not eating carbs, your body will demand glucose. Lifting heavy depletes glycogen. Glycogen is like glucose. And so if you don't eat those carbs, your body will produce glucose to replenish the glycogen via gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is when your liver produces glucose for the body. Gluconeogenesis is a good thing. It happens in the morning when we wake up, but it's not necessarily beneficial if it's happening more than that. And so I wanted to experiment with giving my body the carbs instead of allowing my body to produce the glucose it needed to replenish the glycogen. That is where I'm coming from with all of this. The benefits of experimenting with this, I hit massive PRs. I'm talking 30 pounds heavier than my previous personal record. That's huge. The reason for this is that carbs can provide something called an increase in mechanical tension. Mechanical tension basically means that we can lift heavier and I did experience this. It's very clear that carb cycling has allowed me to lift heavier weight. Is it necessary to become stronger and to gain muscle? Is it necessary to eat carbs? No. I want to be clear. I gained 65 healthy pounds with zero carbs. I chose to do zero carb because I knew, one, I had an eating disorder. I had a binge eating disorder. Two, my hormones were jacked up. I wanted to support my body. I wanted to be insulin sensitive. I wanted to gain muscle. And gaining weight with carbs versus no carbs is totally different. So it's a really good way to be safe. If you have autoimmune issues, gut issues, insulin resistance, if you have sleep issues, I think that lower carb is the way to go, personally. That was my personal experience. But now that I'm healed and I've been stable for over a year, I was ready to experiment with carbs. Which carbs did I eat? Berries. Number one, blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, yogurt and I would never eat naked carbs. So naked carbs are basically eating carbs in isolation. I always ate my protein and fat first. So I would make some type of meat, whether that be goat shank, bone and veal, veal breast, whatever it was, venison burgers, I would eat all of that first. And then I would eat my carbs. That could be some strawberries, some blackberries on my yogurt. I was playing around with peanut butter powder. Why peanut butter powder? Because I love peanut butter, but I don't love the fat in peanut butter. It's inflammatory. I don't want that fat. So the PB Fit powder has some carbs, but not the fat, so I'm cool with that. So I made some, I actually came up with a keto recipe and it will be in my cookbook. They're peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. I did sweet potato. I found that I could not eat a whole sweet potato, not even once. It was so filling. And this is also something I've never experienced in my life. So before I healed and before the carnivore diet, I was, um, I won't say that I was addicted to sugar, but I definitely could eat carbs nonstop. Like I was a bottomless pit. I could eat popcorn from 10 o'clock at night to 5 a.m. in the morning. In fact, I have. I had a binge eating disorder when I was very underweight. I was very triggered and I just wanted to gain weight to save my life. I had a chronic C. diff infection, which was depleting me, and that's why I got down to 69 pounds. So not once did I try restricting foods to become thin or anything like that. It was a gut infection, and I was so triggered that I started binge eating. And it wasn't junk food, it wasn't Snickers bars, it was keto treats and foods, and sometimes sweet potatoes. So that past is behind me, and I believe that God 
I am a new person in Christ. So I'm not afraid of my past. I'm not afraid of my old addictions. I am set free. And so I tried this carb thing and sure enough, I am not struggling with addiction. I'm not struggling with that bondage because I am a new person. And that mindset thing was huge. If you ever try to incorporate carbs after a season of zero carb and healing, I would strongly recommend that you search your heart of hearts, search your motive, know that you're free from your past and be mentally ready for that. There are many people in this space who I respect so much and I kudos to you for choosing a life of sobriety because you know that you have an addictive personality and that if you were to eat something sweet tasting like carnivore brownies or carnivore ice cream, that would trigger you to go eat the real thing and it would trigger you to go down a slippery slope. That is a personal decision that everyone needs to make. So I really took my time to think about this and pray about it for months before I tried this. Some other carbs that I tried, I did an apple, I did an orange. Those are the main sources, I'm trying to think. That's pretty much it. I did try a, a gluten-free granola, grain-free, gluten-free gr granola. It did not have flax in it. I don't touch flax because it's estrogenic. It was kind of hard to find anything that I could do, but it did have oats and it made me really gassy. So I haven't farted for like four years and when I ate that stuff, I was so uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep because I was farting. Like I woke myself up because I farted. So I just didn't eat it after that. I don't know why people eat stuff like that. So I really stuck with the berries most of the time. Now, how many carbs did I eat? I started out with 50. That was safe. Then I went up to 80. One day I ate 150 carbs in one day. Kept my protein where it should be, around one gram of protein per pound of healthy weight. And I was fine. My blood sugar was totally stable. 80. My blood sugar was 80 after eating. It was 80 the next morning. I tested it at the times that I always test it and I feel like it really did help me to recover from that really heavy lift. Now I'm not going to be doing that anymore because I'm done with this season of strengthening and gaining and experimenting and I just want to be low carb because it's easy. I feel best low carb or zero carb. I crave meat every day. I found on the days that I planned to eat carbs that I was craving meat. I wasn't craving carbs. There were many days where I was like, man, I don't really feel like eating carbs, but I did it because I wanted to experiment. So there were benefits to it, but overall I feel better with no carbs as I always have. So I would say that if you are in a season where you're totally stable and you want to experiment and you're lifting heavy, then this might be something cool to try. I would do three days low carb or no carb and then one day high carb. And when I say high carb, no higher than 100 grams, except for that one day that I did 150. And that day I had a banana with that peanut butter and I couldn't finish it. I find that with bananas, sweet potatoes, they're hard for me to finish. And that's really interesting to me because I used to eat them in copious amounts. Probably because I chose to have my protein first, probably because I'm leptin sensitive. Leptin is my satiety hormone. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And, and I would just, you know, before you dive into this, identify why you're doing it. Is it going to be a slippery slope? If you start thinking about food all the time and if it takes up too much of your time, then maybe just leave it out because again, you can gain muscle and hit PRs without carbs. But this shortcut to lower the cortisol response and lower that gluconeogenesis response after a heavy lift, I can see the benefit. I can. Now I'm choosing to stop with it because I just, I don't like having to think about it so much. I like the food freedom that I have eating no carbs because I maintain more metabolic flexibility. That means that my body's not depending on that glucose. So like that day that I had 150 carbs, my body went right back into ketosis, but I could feel the shift and I feel more hunger because my body is like, well, I want some glucose. I don't want that. I want the freedom of being able to wait, take my time and not feel like I'm starving. I want the freedom to run errands and knock out tasks and record videos like this when I haven't eaten yet. I've already done CrossFit today and I'm not starving. I'm not hangry. 
my body is using its own body fat. I like that freedom and I like that flexibility. I like, I just like no carbs. It feels right. But I'm not afraid of carbs now. And so I am really proud of myself. I know that there are people in this community, again, I want to repeat, I fully, fully, fully back and respect the people who choose no carbs. But I do not stand by the statement that carbs are the, the enemy. I believe seed oils are worse than carbs. I believe that everyone's in a different season and you have to identify, are they gonna help you or hurt you? And that might change. There was a day that I believed I would never be able to eat carbs again. I never ever thought I would be able to do this. I had real food addiction, real binge eating. I mean, I couldn't drive in my car without snacking on something. It was really bad. And now I'm here. And so I attribute that freedom to God's grace, largely. But if you're still someone who likes the simplicity of no carbs, keep it up. You know, like when I become a mom, I want this flexibility. I don't want to feel like I have to go eat. I want to be able to extend myself further. And I can do that better when I'm eating low carb to no carb. That's my personal experience. So I just wanted to be vulnerable and transparent as I like to be. If you have questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Again, you have to identify yourself and what's best for you. So if you're an athlete, if you're in a stable place and you've been doing zero carb and you just want to like get stronger and try something new, feel free to reach out to me. I feel confident that I can guide someone through this now, but it's really not too tricky. And just remember that there is a time and season for these things and sometimes it's never appropriate and I fully support you. Hey you guys, my spring retreat is coming up. It's May 11 through 16 at North Myrtle Beach. We're gonna have Dr. Robert Kiltz and Dr. Lisa Wiedemann. They are incredible, very knowledgeable, wonderful carnivores. And this is an intimate setting, no more than 25 people. We're gonna have question and answers unlimited amounts of billy dough meats, North Star Bison. I'm going to be making all of my recipes that will be going into my cookbook, including the exclusive ones. And it's just a great time to have a tribe to experience this animal-based carnivorous lifestyle without white knuckling. You're going to go home feeling motivated. You're going to go home knowing that you have other people, other friends who are like-minded. You're not alone in this. And that's my goal is for you to be able to go and live your life optimally in a sustainable way. And it's just unforgettable. And the fellowship, the eating, the relaxation, the recovery is huge. There are so many breakthroughs that happen during these retreats. There are so many conversations that you'll never forget that will impact you in a positive way for the rest of your life. If you're interested in my next retreat, please let me know by commenting down below or emailing me at rebecca at tailoredketo.health and I will send you the info.